Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, a number of you asked me, it was about a week or so ago now, about the Linux Mint partnership with Mozilla. And I finally did get the chance to have a look at this in a little bit more detail. And so we are going to examine the various elements of this, what it means, and uh, is this a positive? Is this a negative? What are the various implications and things like that? And there is a lot to this, which is quite exciting. And we are actually going to get our information going over to the blog post. There are two. There is a uh, a post here about uh, which was January 10th and I'm recording this January 22nd or 21st. So, you know, I'm, I'm a week or so behind on this, but, you know, things prevented me from covering this a little bit sooner. But uh, they signed a partnership with Mozilla and then a couple days later they did, I think it was one next day they did a follow-up talking about the practical changes. Now, what has been affected here, as it says here, anything on 19, 19, 0, 1, 2, or 3, uh, 20, 20.1 and 20.2 and LMDE4 are all affected by this. 20.3 is not because this was already migrated while the release uh, of 20.3 was coming in. So we're going to go ahead and have a brief look at this. So ultimately what this means is that um, Linux Mint signed a partnership agreement with Mozilla to package the default Mozilla browser instead of their old custom browser. Now, first, let's go ahead and get this one out of the way. There's been a lot of people in the Linux community, mostly people who just don't like Linux Mint because it maybe it's just a pathway for normies to get into Linux and they don't like that. And so there have been a lot of critical videos for Linux Mint for packaging their own version of Firefox and it's very possible that a lot of the negative criticism on this are coming from the same people. So it's like, okay, you don't like that Linux Mint packages their own version of Firefox. Now they're not packaging their own version of Firefox, so you hate them now. Sorry. Uh, I just can't do anything about people who have any irrational hatred. Now, that's not what we're going to be focusing on. Let's talk about the second elephant in the room. I think any partnership with Mozilla is bad. This is a stain on Linux Mint. This is bad. Mozilla has demonstrated themselves to be a bad company. They are putting tests on people without asking them. They are doing woke politics. They are doing weird, crazy things. They are doing experiments with their browser that are completely inappropriate. Mozilla needs to go die. They need to go out, rethink themselves, fire everybody in the executive committee, and come back and recognize their task is to build an open source browser. And the more Mozilla does the things Mozilla is doing, the smaller and smaller their market share is going to be because their actions are pissing off the people who otherwise would look at Firefox as the best browser there is because it is still a full-fledged open source browser that we can get in under the hood and tinker with any and every setting out there. But the problem is, is that Mozilla has forgotten their task, and instead they want to play political FOSS developer instead, and that actually irritates a lot of people using the browsers. They should focus themselves on being a company that makes the browser. So that's the second elephant in the room. I think that this is a negative stain on Linux Mint because Mozilla is Mozilla. And Mozilla seems to want to collect a whole lot of data, which Firefox explicitly, excuse me, Linux Mint explicitly does not want to do. Now, one of the little key factors here, though, is that the only form of data collection Linux Mint has ever done is by loading that default page on Firefox which is now gone. So Linux Mint basically loses the only metric that they had to begin with. That's something else that needs to be mentioned. When you go to start, uh, was it uh, linuxmint.com slash, I think, start or start pay, whatever it was. Um, and, and I think it had a, a prefix for what version you're on as well. That is the only thing that Linux Mint has ever done to determine who is using their, their um, distribution. Easy to just close it out, easy to uh, revert that, easy to not use Firefox and install something else. So that was never a bad thing, but now that one metric that they have is gone. Now, this, though, does mean more money for Mozilla or maybe actually, excuse me, more money for Linux Mint, but or maybe less. 
We'll talk about that and why that is here in a bit. Uh, they basically had the introduction, blah, 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 Mozilla release source code, blah, blah, blah. They left out the part how Mozilla actually irritates half of the open source community, and that is where this is going to be a negative on Linux Mint, because a lot of people, including this guy right here, does not like Mozilla as a company. While I still can admit Firefox, eh, it's one of the better browsers. It's like Brave. I think the company behind Brave is bad, unscrupulous, and raises some concerns, but the browser itself is good. I can attest to that. So with that being said, we're coming back down and now they're talking about the basic defaults. So basically Linux Mint has always had a, uh, they've always had a, a customized version of Firefox. It was customized from Ubuntu's version, further customized to do more privacy settings, basically make things better for the user, opt out of um, experiments, opt out of data collection, all that type of stuff by default. They are no longer doing that, and this is a bad thing. Linux Mint needs to rethink this. They need to go back, and us as the community, since Linux Mint listens to their user base, we need to tell them this is a bad idea, stop it. Now, it's not as simple as that, because the driving factor behind this goes back to Ubuntu. This is something I have been talking about for a long time, so all you guys are like, you're just fear, uncertainty, and da, 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 you're a fud spreader. No. Let me tell you the core reason for this, as described right down here in the article, okay, highlighted here, the change means a tremendous simplification in terms of maintenance and development. We used to build Firefox ourselves using Ubuntu's packaging, which is set to be discontinued as Ubuntu moves toward Snap. This is what I've been saying for a long time, is that the biggest negative of Snap with Ubuntu pushing it is that they have started to neglect their package base in Ubuntu, and this is now affecting downstream distributions. So as Ubuntu now drops Firefox and says, oh, we'll just do the Snap, which, by the way, is managed by Mozilla. <laughs> now we have lost the ability to manage the code. Now they could go back up and use the Debian one. They're choosing not to do that and do the partnership with Mozilla. So this isn't uh, entirely Ubuntu's fault. But the fact of the matter is they're doing this because Ubuntu is no longer packaging software. What other software is Ubuntu neglecting which is going to cause problems? That's a good question. But this does simplify their process. They need to spend a lot less time and now what's going to happen is they're packaging the source code from Mozilla itself and relying on all of Mozilla's defaults. And Mozilla has bad defaults on Firefox. That's a problematic thing. Okay, so it is simplified for them, which is uh, which is good, less resources on that. But um, the downside for Linux Mint is the revenue. Under the model prior to this being released, and this has been released by now, but under the model prior to this being released, Firefox would ship with, we'll go back full screen for this, Firefox shipped with Yahoo as the default, Start Page, and DuckDuckGo in their search options. If you selected either one of those three, Linux Mint made revenue. Okay, Google was not in that list. With the default now, they are getting rid of all of those and using Google's defaults, uh, excuse me, Firefox's defaults. There's too many companies here. They're using Firefox's defaults, which is Google, Bing, Amazon. Uh, let's see, Google, Bing, Amazon. Uh, there's eBay in there, a few things like that. Your basic search engines, Google, uh, is the only one that will fund Linux Mint. So, in other words now, whereas all of us using Linux Mint, we were like, and I hate Yahoo, go in there, if I'm using your default search engine, I'm going to change it to a start page or DuckDuckGo, I don't care which one, just not Yahoo. Linux Mint would make revenue because that's good enough for me, let's just switch that. Now, the only way Linux Mint is making revenue from your internet searches is when you're using Google. So, now we have the cross-section of people using Linux Mint also choosing to keep Google as your default search engine. 
How many goose eggs is that going to be? Not a lot. Very few people. So I think that this is actually going to cause Linux Mint's overall revenue from search at least to greatly decrease. Now, there is some financial incentive on the Mozilla end, I believe, um, and that is not specifically disclosed. And that's okay. They can make a, a deal with Mozilla. I don't really care about that. Uh, it is their distribution. But the problem is all of those search engines, um, they're causing it that if you just use either Yahoo or StartPage or DuckDuckGo and the update had occurred, it automatically flipped you back to Google. Yay. If you had downloaded some other browser like the Brave browser and used that, that would be preserved. Okay, but what's happening here is that Linux Mint is going to lose the revenue from searches because the only way that they are going to make any revenue from searching on the browser is going to be from Google. Now, if you still want to support Linux Mint with search revenue, any other browser in the repository, and off the, head, off the top, like Chromium is in there, there's a few other ones, those will still ship with the start page Yahoo and DuckDuckGo using alternative browsers that are not Firefox and using any one of those built-in search engines. Linux Mint will still receive revenue from that. So keep that in mind. But as far as this takes place, when this Firefox change is made and, and has been made, um, except my system I haven't updated in a little bit, and I was set to update soon, and I'm going to have to push it off a little bit longer until I have time to mess with the changes I'm going to have in Mozilla. So eventually. But what's happening now is you're going to be forced into Google. You can still change it. You can still change it later, but you're going to have to add the other engines because Firefox does not generally support the privacy-focused ones. And that is the problematic thing. So there is some question and answer down here. Uh, will transition negatively affect performance? No, we're getting slightly faster performance. Eh, maybe, maybe not. That's going to be up to your system. Which search engines generate revenue in Firefox? Only Google. Other browsers, uh, the default search engines, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, and StartPage. Um, so if you use any of those defaults on Firefox, that is no longer there. Um, and as far as your settings changes, um, this is kind of a moot point because this has already happened. Anything that you have changed will be preserved. Anything that you're like, Linux Mint does this fine, but Mozilla does it different, that will have toggled. So these are some of the challenges and the problems. Overall, in my opinion, as a avid Linux Mint user and recommender, this is a bad deal. Linux Mint needs to rethink this partnership. They need to look at other options because any partnership with Mozilla is a partnership down the bad road. Also, being a distribution that focused so much on privacy and not wanting to collect any data, you're literally handing all of your users over to a company who wants to collect data and wants to do all these other types of things and wants to opt you into all this garbage and wants to force Google on you. These are bad things that is going to cause a bad taste for people trying to leave Windows and Mac because these options are being foisted on them. So in my opinion, this is a stupid move. It needs to be rethought. And those of us who are the users of the community need to let Linux Mint know this, not rudely, but to say, hey, this is a negative thing because Mozilla seems to have lost its ever-loving mind and anything that forces their stuff in defaults on us is a problematic thing. Now, I did see in the comments below on these articles, some people are saying, they, hey, would you start packaging Brave soon? Maybe we'll see that if enough of us ask for that. Um, but as far as uh, that is concerned, there are other... Um, web browsers out there that you can use and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Linux Mint software manager and see what other alternatives there are because at this point in time if you're not going to harden your Firefox you're going to want to uninstall it. So we have Firefox uh, which you should uninstall or harden it. Uh, hardening it is fine as well. That's what I do. Um, Chromium, Midori, Epiphany, Lynx, Conqueror, there's links too. There's a Flathub version of Firefox. That's going to be just as bad. Um, Falcon, Lynx, Dillo. Hmm. Um, I do have LibreWolf, although I 
think that's a flat pack now. Um, Gnome Web, NetSurf, there are a lot of options. So uh, there are certainly a lot of options you can use. So uh, do that. Uh, let Linux Mint know this is probably a bad deal because Mozilla itself is crazy and the defaults of Firefox are kind of dangerous. Uh, we need a better policy hardened. And I don't know, maybe I will do another video soon on hardening Firefox and creating a policy that you can actually just download and import. Um, I'll look into doing that. Let me know in the comments if I should go ahead and do that sometime soon. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.